Howdy folks, and welcome back to Making a Fakemon Region! The show where I make designs for a hypothetical Pokemon game based on a region what's based around the world's cultures all mashed into one region. Okay? Okay. Last episode we talked about early birds and rodents based around the concept of mining as, well, in this hypothetical region, you start off in a mining town. So if you want to check that video out, feel free to check it out. I hope you enjoy it if you do. And at the end of that episode, I said I'd be talking about the early rodents. Each Pokemon game usually has an early rodent, you know, you've got Rattata, Sentret, Zigzagoon, and so on. And this region is no different. So, <laughs> let's get on to it. But first, let's talk about evolution. Not real life evolution, but Pokemon evolution. On the previous episodes in this series, I've always tried to make evolutions not just appear like a bigger version of the previous one, right? Because I guess sometimes it can come off as a little lazy where if I just showed you a cactus starter and said its two evolutions are literally just a bigger cactus, well, it's, it's going to get boring, right? So I tried my best to add themes into it and make it a boxing cactus, you know? And the same for all, all previous Fakie Mall I've done videos about. But that's not to say I'm against simpler evolutions. Some people are, though. Some people look at Garbodor and Trubbish and are like, Wow, that's so lazy, it's literally just a garbage Pokemon evolving into a bigger garbage Pokemon. Yeah, because God forbid a poison type having more than one colour. It really grinds my gears because one of the biggest complaints about every Pokemon game other than Generation 1 is the evolutions are so lazy, it's literally just the same, but it gets bigger. Rattata, a rat that gets bigger. Pidgey gets bigger twice. Oh, Cubone's had a growth spurt. Must be a new Pokemon. Hey, let's just flip over the Voltorb. Yeah, that's a new Pokemon. Oh, let's stretch out the Dratini. New Pokemon. Hey, did someone forget to draw Seal with the muzzle? Oh, no, no. That's just a new Pokemon. Let's just increase the size of Grimer ever so slightly there. New Pokemon. Horse. Bigger horse. New Pokemon. Oh, guys, we need a new Pokemon. Don't worry, just copy and paste the Magnemite a few times. It's a new Pokemon. Who gave the turtle ears? <laughs> I think I've made my point. Look. I love Generation 1 designs so much, they are very well above average designs. But you cannot turn to me and say Pokemon's gotten so lazy with their evolution designs when evolutions have been getting bigger since day one! And that's not me criticising it, that's just me saying how it is. Because remember, Generation 1 was the first Pokemon game, so there wasn't anything to go on before it. So I had to explain the point of evolution, well, before people had really an idea of what it was. That's probably why some of the earlier Pokemon do have such simple designs. Take Caterpie, Rattata and Pidgey, some of the first Pokemon anyone would ever see in Generation 1. Caterpie evolving at such a low level will show off to the player that yes, Pokemon can go under metamorphosis if they level up enough, going into a cocoon and a butterfly. That's easy for anyone to understand. And then chances are your starter will evolve before Rattata and Pidgey, so again, you'll understand that some Pokemon require high levels to evolve. I'd also say that's why the middle evolutions of the starters are so much simpler compared to the final evolutions. And then again, by the time you train up your Rattata and Pidgey up, they become bigger and stronger, and you get the idea of evolution. And then even further along the line, your starter will evolve into its third form, which will be a lot more different in contrast to its middle evolution, because, well, again, it shows off the higher the level, the bigger and badder the evolution's gonna be. It's kind of impressive how just those four Pokémon alone can explain how the point of evolution in Pokémon works. You understand that some Pokémon require different levels to evolve, some Pokémon only evolve once, some Pokémon only evolve twice. I'm probably thinking way too into it, but it, it's still kind of fun to think about. And that's pretty much the precedent set for, well, every other Pokemon game afterwards. Most of the early rodents, birds and bugs have simple evolutions because, well, each Pokemon game was meant to be treated as its own Pokemon game. They're always designed specifically for newcomers first. Plus, simple designs are absolutely fine. I mean, not even in Pokemon, but Fakemon as well, as in each new Pokemon game has around, what, at, around 100 new Pokemon per game? You do need some simple ones that are just easy to grasp and evolve. You don't need every Pokemon being an absolute mind blast of concepts. Especially if you're one guy doing it all by yourself. I th it's nice to do some simpler designs, is what I'm saying, basically. And that's what this episode's about. Simpler designs. Plus, a whole new concept for this hypothetical region, what I hope you'll enjoy. So, without further ado, enough rambling, let's actually get into it. This is Ruby, the small rodent Pokemon. Idle one thing. It's just a little baby rodent. What likes to, you know, prowl around. It likes to fight things. It's got a very delicate tail. What it, you know, I like the idea that it makes a kind of a radius around it. And a bunch of ruby beans. Whenever they hang out together, they never turn their backs to each other in case their tail tails get tangled. But that's pretty much it. It's just a very simple design. However, that's not the only ruby bean we have. In fact, in this region, there has been four different types of ruby bean discovered. The concept is in regional variants. For those who don't know, regular regional variants in Pokemon usually work like this. Everywhere else, this is what a Rattata looks like. 
However, in the Alolan region, that is what a Rattata looks like. Every Rattata in Alola is this. However, everywhere else, this is what a Rattata is. Okay? Okay. It's based on the concept of well, real life, natural selection and diversity, right? Over time, animals will evolve to suit their habitat and, well, evolve to survive in it. And that's pretty much what regional variants are. This Rattata looks the way it does specifically because it had to survive in the Alola region. Okay? Okay. In regional variants are very similar thing, however, all different variants are in this one region. There's not just one type of ruby for this region, there's all four available in this region. It's not going to be a case of, in this region, this is what ruby bean is, in the other region, that is what a ruby bean is. No, all four of these ruby beans are in this one region, hence the name in regional variants. They're all part of the same region, but they're all varied still. So this is a baseline pure ruby. These ones are found in like, you know, shallow grasslands, maybe some cities and towns, just a regular ruby, normal type. And the same goes for its evolution, kind of. Now, before I do um, keep talking about the, its evolution, I want to mention this is one of the weirdest Pokemon to draw for me because I had a completely different idea in my head of what I wanted him to look like. I like the idea that, you know, originally he was going to be laid back and bouncing on his tail and like treating his tail like a spring and bouncing around, but, well, I realised I, for some reason I couldn't get it down on, onto it, but either way, I, I'm happy how this one looks like. Although I feel like it definitely might need a new drawing at some point, because I feel like its pose doesn't look like exactly what I wanted it to. This is now Envirodent, a mix between environment and rodent, of course, named after the fact that there's so many different types of species around the region. Now the normal type of Envirodent, this one, bounces its way through forests, woodlands, plains and savannas. I like the idea that, you know, it, it'll always carry its baby rubines in its arms, that's why it always has its arms crossed naturally, just a kind of instinct kind of thing. It can't run very well, but it's a lot better jumping. I like the idea that its legs are definitely built to bending, not running sort of thing, right? It's weird how much I drew him without giving him its nose. I kind of realize- I like the style that it didn't have a nose, but I of course it gave one eventually. And its ears are weird. I like the idea that as a baby it never had ears, so when it, you know, when it grows up into one and it, it doesn't- its ears don't develop properly. There's a reason for that what I'll get into later. And its skin all reddens up because I guess it moves around a lot in the sun, so it's kind of a sunburn, kind of tanny kind of thing, right? But anyway, yeah, there we go. That's the original Rubine and an Envirodent. The simple, plain and pure, normal types, based on the kangaroo mouse, which is adorable. So let's go on to its next variant, the Swamp variant of Ruby. This one's evolved to be living in murky rivers, swamps. That's why it's so much bigger, it's got a lot more flabbers to keep itself warm. It's just kind of meaner because it lives in a harsher environment. It's bigger, scarier, poison type. And his evolution is pretty much the exact same, just a bigger, meaner, purpler environment. I like the idea that its whiskers grow down to be a lot longer and kind of droopier, like the idea that it can catch fish and algae and bugs on it so it can eat it or something. Its spikes go longer, it doesn't even grow ears at all. It does grow a second tail though, what it can use as a double whip, or it can again, catch prey. And it's got more weird little spike things. I like the idea that perhaps gender differences, the female ones tend to have more softer spikes once the males have larger ones, so they can fight over females I guess, right? And it's got this weird blue murky poisonous liquid drooping out of it, like Albert's paws. So I guess that's its way its body is expelling the poison. Because its body realistically can't hold on to the poison because, well, it's still an environment. It just evolved into a swampy biome. So I guess it excretes the poison so it doesn't exactly hurt itself, right? It's not poison genetically, it's just learned how to use the poison to defend itself, I guess. So yeah, that's the swamp environment. Based on, of course, the swamp rats. Or more specifically, the Australian water rat. From the Australian water rat, let's go to the African grass rat. Out of the four, this one definitely looks the most different and it's definitely diverse the most. This used to live in very lush environments like jungles and forests. However, sadly due to deforestation, it's kind of forced to take a job. A couple hundred years ago, these rubines would have been pure ground type, living underground and just making simple burrows. However, due to the land they used to live off, well, being burnt away, taken away, and just destroyed, it's essentially made its own environment on its back to carry around with it, to protect the environment around it. It picks up mushrooms, seeds, flowers, funguses, even like grass diseases and water, weeds, anything it realistically can pop on its back. And instead of being purely underground, it now waddles the outside, the surface, just sprawling around, dropping its seeds, its funguses, whatever it can to just try and regrow the jungles it once used to live in. 
I like the idea that this evolution, the environment, is a lot bigger than the other ones because, well, it's carrying all this landmass on it. Like, it's known as the wandering biome to the townspeople around it. I also like the imagery of them. Originally, I just gave it its orange a kind of eyeliner as just a just kind of a little reference to the real life African grass rats where these are based off as some pictures look like they've got little orange rings around their eyes. But I also like the idea that it's 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 meant to be crying the tears of nature, you know, so something symbolic like that. And it only opens its eyes to people who truly proven themselves to care about the environment. These are also the only rubies and environments to have evolved claws. I like the idea that, you know, they kind of they, um, as they move around the grasslands and dirt, they, you know, they tear it up so they can plant their seeds in it. They essentially have mini little hoes on their hands. I also like that now that it's older and its tail is now bigger and stronger, it actually builds up a little uh, shovel thing at the end of its tail. Like it picks up a rock where it ties around its own tail, just so it can pick up more dirt to shovel onto itself more efficiently and maybe even dig more holes to plant, you know, things like bigger trees and things like that. Although I really liked its design, I did realise that it looked way too similar to the original Rubine, so I fiddled around with its colours a bit to make it look a bit more... just kind of more jungly, or so, like more, more lush. So. There we go, that's the final environment. Well, not the final one, but the, fi the final design for this environment. I really like it. It's, I would say, probably my favourite out of the four, but I don't really have favourites. I love them all. Mm. Anyway, the last Rubin we have to show off is this one. Not specifically based on anything other than the fact that, well, it's an electric mouse. Not that one. But again, I like to imagine a couple hundred years ago, this was actually just a fighting type instead of electric. But once that electricity was being, you know, mass produced around the region, people wanted more efficient ways to produce it without destroying the environment. And since these used to be fighting types, they used to be really active, well, they simply just hooked them on like these, you know, hamster wheels to generate electricity. And over years and years and years, humans purposefully bred them to be more and more quicker and quicker and quicker to the point where they stopped being a fighting type, they stopped really caring about their pure strength, and they only cared about generating electricity. So now we have the electric Rubin. <laughs> its head's a lot more narrow so it can run a lot quicker, its body's a lot more smaller than the others because, well, it wasn't built to be an electric type, so it's it keeps moving so much, it keeps losing all the weight, and, uh, yeah, it keeps shocking itself because it wasn't meant to be an electric type, but what can you do? I like the idea that, um, it stands on its front two uh, legs and kicks its two back legs, you know, back and forth, back and forth really quickly to generate its own electricity, but, yeah. So that's the electric Rubine. Let's show off the electric Environment. Again, I like the idea that these were not built to be electric types, so in its final um, spray, I like that, you know, he's, he looks like he's meant to be jittering and shaking because he's not meant to be holding this much electricity. His back fur goes all sparky, its ears are all spiky and weird. Its tail is now kind of spickled up. It's split into two again, though. I like the idea that, you know, these are all still meant to be um, environments, genetically speaking, so they do have similarities. I guess whilst we're on the last one, I'll explain why they have wonky ears or no ears at all. Well, since all these Rubines are so genetically similar, yet clearly different at the same time, breeders have found a way to, um, well, crossbreed them. Not to make new species hybrids per se, but, but breeders have made it a habit, a hobby even, to make the best environments ever, because this is a Fakemon region, right? So Fakemon are made to battle each other, so breeders, are, you know, they try to make the best capable Rubian environment for battle, right? And since there's four Pokemon what are so different, yet genetically similar, Breeders have tried to breed them, you know, crossbreed them all together to try and make the best, most powerfulest environment. If you want to poison environment and what can learn electric attacks, well, simple, just crossbreed the two. If you want a poison environment, what can learn electric attacks but has the speed of a grass environment, again, you can crossbreed those all together. If you want a regular environment with the speed of the electric type and the power of the poison type, again, you can crossbreed them all together. Pokemon trainers and breeders have made it kind of into a sport to breed the best environment, which has kind of backfired because, well, what breeders usually do is inbreed a lot of their Fakemon. But unfortunately, these Fakemon, although the same species technically, they are genetically different enough to cause problems when inbreeding. So again, a couple hundred years ago, these would have looked a lot more healthier and more, well, rodent-like, but now they all look a little bit, you know, their noses are all awkward, their ears are all messed up, they've got weird spikes on their head for some reason, you know? They're not very healthy, unfortunately, but what can you do? Luckily, they're not real, so it's fine. So yeah, there we go. That's the final electric environment. And with that, that's all the Rubies and environments. Do you like them? I hope you do, because these were 
these were really fun to draw and create, and I like the idea that, you know, I tried my best to make them literally just simpler, bigger designs, but also try and make them different enough that you can clearly tell the difference between a adult and a baby. So yeah, these this is the early rodent ruby. And well, although the other three aren't exactly early root, they're still the same type of ruby, so... Yeah, I hope you like them! Tell me what you think of them in the comments, or if you've got any other ideas of how you'd change them, again, let me know! So now that we've done the early bird and the early rodent, I guess the next thing to do is the early bug type, Contidy! So, we'll get on to that next time, I hope you're excited for that! If you are, well, I'll see you soon and hopefully you'll enjoy it! Anyway, thank you all so much for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, or if you're off to bed, have the sweetest of dreams, and I'll see you all in a bit! Toodle-hoo! Bye.